Zornbush download 161 for those playing at home. Andrew and Michael, good morning. Good there morning. We go. We've given away that we're filming of a morning. <laughs> uh, plenty going on in ASX land. Uh, where do you want to start, Dowie? Oh, Andrew, uh, probably a Bendigo Bank is maybe not a bad uh, place to start. We're trying to set a positive. Yeah. <laughs> let's life. get let's get perhaps the bad stuff out of the way bad, first, and uh, we'll sort of have a, a good good run on the way home. Mm-hmm. In fact, they're all got tinges of bad in there today, don't they? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Bendigo came out with a profit warning. What's today? Wednesday, mm-hmm. so Monday. Um, shares dropped by about five percent on the back of that profit warning. Whether we're in the middle of bank profit reporting season for those who watch these regularly, hi again, Mum. Uh, we've got ANZ having reported Westpac and NAV actually report their profits tomorrow and next week. Yeah. So some people are sort of crystal ball gazing. Is there some lessons that we can draw out of Bendigo's result compared to uh, the NAB and the Westpac result? Look, I don't think so. I think I'm sure you'd agree. The regional banks, it's pretty tough for them at the yeah. moment. And so I think it's more of an issue for Bendigo, Bank of Queensland, my state, heritage, dare I say it, you know, these smaller institutions, it's harder for them to raise money, the cost of funding is higher, all that type of stuff. What do you think? Yeah, look, it's it's a it's an interesting one, Andrew, because there's been some pretty good numbers rolling out of the banks and of course Bendigo only brought their full year result out. You know, mm. back in sort of late July, early August, which and was quite good. Claps all around. Absolutely. The the price had a really good rally. So this is, a, you know, an update. Um, obviously, yeah. Things, a surprise, uh, one might say. Yeah, 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 things a bit tougher than perhaps what was uh, initially, uh, you know, disclosed in the in the full year results. Yeah. So, but you're right. I think um, certainly numbers from the big four have been, you know, pretty strong, really. There's been a, a fair bit of noise around the big four banks and... The latest, of course, is uh, you know bank bill swap rate manipulation and and that sort of thing. But um, oh look, the, the big four are doing it. I'm not won't say easily, but doing it pretty pretty well. Regional banks here have probably got a few more headwinds. And I mean these these big four, they make thirty billion dollars after tax profit a year. Please don't feel sorry for them. <laughs> Let's be really clear about this. There is no reason to feel sorry for them. Uh, speaking of feeling sorry for people, my shareholders, the uh, the gift that keeps on giving, uh, they came out this morning with a first quarterly update, basically pr- pressured into it by uh, Solly Lou, who's an activist shareholder, holds about 10 or 11% of the register. I actually bought for uh, my wife and I, i uh, see if it works out all right, some my shares on the back um, of Solly getting in uh, because basically... He has been proven to be quite effective in sort of driving significant change in businesses previously. A country road immediately comes to mind. Anyway, he's pressured them to releasing their results. Uh, negative sales mm-hmm. down about 2% quarter on quarter. So it's pretty pretty ordinary stuff. Um, what's your thought on retail at the moment? And maybe it's a good segue if we sort of also talk about that Woolies result as well. Yeah, oh, look, tough gig, Andrew, no doubt about it. Almost it like um, broking, you know. It's yeah. the paradise that uh, selling shares is. And we should encourage watchers to feel sorry for us, that's for sure. So, uh, nee, nee, nee. Um, yeah, look, tough. Those traditional department stores, you know, the foot, foot traffic through shopping centres is dropping off, you know, the internet, of course. Everyone's is, using yeah, one of those. Internet's changed everything in that space, albeit... Of course, my, uh, you know, David Jones no longer listed in Australia now, but, um, you know, are setting up online presence, but, you know, has it just come that little bit too late? Probably, you know, you can sure. argue for Maya. Maya, of course, has had that ongoing sort of tit for tat um, in the last couple of months with Sol Lu, as you say, Premier Investments. Um, took up that 11-odd percent or 10-odd percent holding back in March of this year. $10.20, so they'd be smarting at $0.74 cents today. Absolutely, yeah. Didn't get a seat on the board either, which they're pretty annoyed about as well. But, yeah, they're now obviously questioning that 100-odd million bucks that they threw in back then. And, and yeah, there's been, a, a, you know, the, the board at Meyer, of course, have been saying, oh, you know, the guys at Premier are, are trying to bulldoze us and the Premier guys are saying the Meyer board Order, you know, not living up to uh, expectations, so that's going to jingle around for a little while. But my, so yeah. yes, the business itself is is 
yeah, got a lot of headwind. Challenged, I think, is the politically correct way of putting it. Mm -hmm. um, so that Woolies result that came out, how was that? Yeah, Woolies pretty good, Andrew. Um, first uh, quarter sales um, coming out uh, by four point nine percent. I think it was up uh, like for like sales, so pretty good. Um, interesting of note, it's it's. It's leaps and bounds ahead of coals uh, just at the moment. Um, you know, West Farmers uh, brought coals out of the doldrums and, of course, it blitzed Woolworths there for a number of years, but the tide has certainly now changed on that supermarket. And is it being driven by Woolies having like better offerings or is there other factors in play? Seemingly price discounting. Um, I think they were sort of suggesting that uh, price deflation was greater than 2.5%. Uh, Everyone so. get their bingo card out and cross that one off the list. Yes. Yeah. So, and of course, you know, we've seen the ongoing war with milk and eggs and that sort of stuff. But uh, look, great for the consumer, no doubt. Is it sustainable for Woolies? Look, in the short term, it makes the numbers look all right. But you'd have to think that, uh, you know, that sort of sales growth is going to dry up. So and buying, because mar mar that's really what they're doing, they're buying market share. Mm -hmm. And you're right, you're not instilling loyalty when you're doing that. You know, the moment that Coles drop their price or Aldi or Costco or Lido or whoever, they're just, those price sensitive shoppers are immediately just going to switch mm -hmm. to somebody else. So, you know, as a Woolly shareholder, which I'm not, um, yeah, I'd sort of be questioning that strategy a little bit. Probably the other key takeaway from that Woolies result was, uh, trying to find the positive, mm -hmm. uh, was that Big W actually uh, had an increase in sales, mm -hmm. which is the first time in literally years. Yeah, so yeah. that's a big positive because they burned about $150 million on Woolies last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, Big W, rather. So, you know, and a special good morning. Uh, it's, yeah, basically, hopefully that's going to improve. Um, so, yeah. you know, let's, uh, we were referencing sort of 10 years there just before. 10-year anniversary, uh, I think it's this week, Michael. What's the 10-year anniversary of? Yeah, Sandra, it seems like a lifetime ago now, doesn't it? Uh, the uh, the All Ordinaries and A6200 hitting their record uh, highs. Mm -hmm. uh, around about uh, 6,800 points, so give or take a few. Where um, are we today? Uh, where are we today? Five, I think the all, I think the all, five, yeah, I think the All Lords actually did creep up over six thousand again uh, there this oh, morning. Did it? So, okay. A six two hundred ran about yeah five nine and a bit. So uh, yeah, uh, and of course uh, November two thousand and seven. That's as good as it got there. And then uh, and uh, GFC subprime loan crisis etc etc. So uh, so if we compare and compare compare and contrast, like say the US, which just is hitting multi year highs nearly daily, and yet, you know, we're 800 points off where 10 years ago, what's the issue with us? Why, we, why do we have issues? Yeah, oh, look, Andrew, I think broadly speaking, I know we've spoken a lot about this internally in the offices that Australia just effectively is, is lack, lacking growth. You know, GDP is, has struggled to, to be more than 2% now for a good while. Um, you know, being a very much a mining commodity based economy, that sector has struggled, um, albeit there's been a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel over the last, say, 12 months or so. Um, but yeah, Australia just doesn't have the growth impetus just at the moment as, say, countries like the, the US and Europe, of course, even. Uh, yep. Having, having, yeah, having said that, they're coming off very low bases as well, True. of course. But um, but yeah, we just don't have that that real growth trigger that perhaps the likes of US, Europe have at the moment. And I'm mindful we're running long here, but very briefly, you know, 2008, there's a whole swag of new shares issued, about $120 billion worth. So, you know, people were getting share purchase plans for Combank at $25 and Wes Farmers at 13 and you know so if you think about it, there was 10% more shares issued that in itself was dilutionary because all those new shares still get the same amount of dividends and so forth so that to me is one of the main reasons we're off but mm. I agree with you to me mm. Australia is Japan 1990s so what I mean by that was they just went sideways for at least 10, 15 years so people's standard of living didn't get any worse mm. but it didn't improve either and, you know, between anemic political leadership, uh, you know, the fact that, as you're saying, we're very much price takers, we're not price makers. Um, the banks are just happily plodding along, taking $30 billion a, a year from us in fees and charges and whatever else. Yeah, I, that, and I guess that's why, you know, this might be another download topic. That's why we're really pivoting towards this international exposure, you know, be it, you know, like... Um, 
say, in antipodes or, you know, um, an, an, ex, an exchange-traded funds or that type of thing because Australia, like if you're a self-funded retiree looking for, for income, Australia's the place to be. But if you're a young person, if I can try and keep us in that area, <laughs> then, yeah, Australia sadly is, is not the place to be. Yeah, we yeah, tried yeah. to finish on an upbeat mate, note, mate, but we just couldn't do it. <laughs> couldn't <laughs> do it. The glass, uh, glass is uh, half, half empty. empty. We're going to uh, drown our sorrows. Till next week. Thank you.